Ashley, do you have a bird surname to you in the background? Maybe. Okay. Got the hook up. I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. Got wildlife, you know, just sing it to you just randomly. That's cool. Just because I'm in a jungle doesn't mean I need to be judged. Thanks. I didn't see him dying himself judging you. I mean, you know, I, wanna, I said I want to be like you. We are currently going to start the professional program that we have now, so please keep your comments to a minimum. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, Mom. All right, Ms. Erica, we can get started. All right, people are gonna keep trickling in, but if you're not early, you're late. I'm just kidding. All right, everyone, good morning. Thank you for giving us a little bit of time on your Wednesday morning. I hope that we are all doing well. Uh, it's good to see some of your faces for some of you who don't have your camera on and you're feeling shy, don't be shy. Um, so it's, again, VBRN online is a little bit different than VBRN in person as we don't really have the time to make the personal connections. So um, afterwards, if you have any questions or there's somebody who gave their 30 second intro that um, piques your interest or has something that you need or vice versa, take notes during. So. Um, you know, it's not going to be a very long pitch. It's 30 seconds. Ashley is, actually has a timer that goes off. So when your 30 seconds is up, um, you do have to stop. But we ask that, you know, keep your notepad and pen and take notes on the person. This way, the whole idea is um, about connection and networking. So obviously, um, I want to thank our sponsors, Villanova and Comcast. Without their support, stuff like this would not be possible. And I would like to thank all of you because, again, without your support, this would also um, not be possible. So we are gonna get right into it. And um, by tradition, Caleb um, always leads our 30 second intro. He is the guru of hitting it uh, within those 30 seconds. So how it's gonna work is you are going to unmute yourself when I call your name. So it's just like being in school again with roll call. I say your name, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. If you are on a computer, you can just hit the space bar or um, you can hit the little three dots and unmute. Give your 30 second intro, which is right here on your screen. And Caleb is going to go first and give you an example. And then we'll just kind of run down the list. All right, here we go. Caleb, you are up. All right, thanks, Erica. So um, just to quickly rehash what Erica said, it's very important for us all to stay within 30 seconds here. So here's all the tenants that are up on the screen. Um, if you don't have any referrals that you've given, that's okay, you can skip that part. So um, really all you need to hit is four basic ones with the last one being repeat. So I'm gonna start now. Ashley, put me on the clock. So my name is Caleb Hoppus, Marine Corps veteran with the second uh, LAR and the Security Force Battalion. Currently, I'm an accounting executive for American Solutions for Business. What we do is we help companies automate and consolidate the purchasing of all their marketing products. Um, we just recently got into the PPE space, so we're also selling uh, KN95 masks, triple layers, nitrile gloves, all those things that businesses need right now. So a good referral for me is somebody who works in the marketing department, uses a lot of these products, or maybe somebody in operations now who's uh, looking for PPE. Again, my name is Caleb Hoppus, American Solutions for Business. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Ashley, can you unspotlight me so that their picture comes up when they talk? I will do the best that I can with the technology I have in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chad, you're gonna go next. Oh God, oh God, so many people, okay. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Chad Allen, uh, United States Marine Corps for uh, 11 years. Uh, I am currently the referral that I am looking for. Uh, I actually was engaged by a manufacturing facility uh, in Eddystone that is looking to build uh, three shifts worth of teams, uh, and they are rapidly growing. So if you know any veterans that are looking for a uh, a good job, a stable job, uh, have them reach out to me, have them send me an email, hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, that's it. Chat out. All right, Jerry Wade, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Jerry Wade, former U.S. Air Force, 
been out for quite a few years. Um, I am the founder of On Point Strategic Planning, which is a financial services firm that is obviously veterans owned. I'm looking to work with individuals that have families with special needs, um, also business owners as well too. Also looking to give On Point as a place where veterans who are looking for a job can try and find a second career coming into financial services if it's something that they're looking to do. Uh, once again, my name is Jerry Wade, On Point Strategic Planning. And Jerry, good, sorry. Nice, Jerry. John? Uh, Jonathan Childs, Army West Point. Um, I am a partner of McNamara Financial Group. I uh, independent independent financial firm. I do work with individuals to formulate a strategy for your goals, uh, whether it be a retirement, whether it be wedding, or things like that. Um, also look for businesses to work with uh, for benefits, especially now with this whole COVID thing right now. I know a lot of things are a little bit um, topsy turvy, so I'll try to help you out with that. Referrals are given. I'm giving referrals to uh, Erica as well as Caleb and a few other people who are not on the call right now. Um, I'm looking for anybody who needs to do work with their uh, firms. Thanks, Jonathan Childs, McNamara Financial Group. Thanks, John. Um, Kyle. Hey guys, Kyle White, former Marine Staff Sergeant. I'm with Milestone Therapy Group. We provide speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy for kids. A great referral for me is a pediatrician, a family med medicine physician, or the office manager, as well as a parent. They're active in the community um, or some type of online or physical group. Great refer, I'm sorry, uh, referrals given. Um, Brad Mills, Gabe Chick, and I know there's others. Kyle White, Milestone Therapy Group, Pediatric Therapy. Thank you, Kyle. All right, Clint Matthews. Hey, so Clint Matthews, United States Marine Corps, eight years, four is a grunt, four is MP. Uh, my new current role is I am the commercial marketing manager for CertiPro Painters in KOP. Referrals needed, any commercial company that needs paint, uh, schools, um, commercial buildings, so on and so forth. Referrals given, um, gave uh, Frag Out Clothing, Irrelevant Warriors, they did all our t-shirts. Um, you know, I'm just trying to build my network again with all contractors, I can help out myself personally. Uh, repeat my name again, it's Clint Matthews, United States Marine Corps, that's it. Take Chad. The only thing good about everyone being muted is that we can't hear all of our Marines making grunt sounds every time someone says that they're a Marine. <laughs> all right, no, don't Tom do Walsh. <coughs> Tom, I, don't, I called you Tom Walsh. I don't know if you heard me. I'm sorry, I have to, I have to pass this time. I, I'll, I'll be better prepared next time. Thank you. Sure. You let me know if at the, yeah, yeah. If at the end, if you want to say something, we can come back to you. Okay. Sure. Um, let's go with uh, Connor Cox. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Connor Cox, uh, former Navy SWO. Uh, I recently graduated business school um, and a school for environment and sustainability from university of Michigan, but I'll be moving to Philadelphia in early July. Um, new to the group, so I haven't given referrals or received any, but I'm interested in renewable energy, energy, and uh, finance. Uh, again, Connor Cox, U.S. Navy. Nice job. Well, welcome, Connor. We're happy to have you. Um, David. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, Dave uh, Baru, uh, U.S. Uh, Army Intelligence, uh, uh, formerly. Uh, I am currently a small business specialist for Santander Bank. A good referral for me would be uh, any business owner that uh, needs any assistance with his banking. I also do uh, personal banking as well. And uh, I also host a uh, kind of a low-tech business networking group uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, if you just search for my name, David Baru, B-E-R-U-H, uh, you can find it. Uh, we actually meet tomorrow morning. And again, David Baru from Santander Bank. Thank you, David. Glenn, we'll have you go next. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. Somehow my video got stopped instead of my 
There we go. Glenn Geisinger, I am a, a, a former paratrooper of the 82nd Airborne Division. I currently run Alliance Media Group, a company I've owned for over 12 years. Uh, first time in the group, so I haven't given any referrals. Uh, the referrals that I need, I work with business owners uh, from startups all the way up to larger corporations with multiple sites uh, to assist them in targeting their particular uh, clients, uh, owners, whatever they need. So that's really our thing is surgical targeting uh, in the advertising field. Again, it's Glenn Geisinger with Alliance Media Group. It's great to be part of the group. Good job on your, on your 30 seconds for being your first time. Thanks. Nice work. <laughs> All right, well, Chanel, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Hey, girl. Uh, my name is Chanel Santiago. I work for the Department of Veterans Affairs at the Norristown Vet Center. Uh, we provide counseling to veterans who have served in combat or any survivor of military sexual trauma. And uh, if they're active guard or reserve, we can still see them as well and also their family. So a good referral for me would be all of the above that I just named. Just want to say hi to everybody, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm here, I made it. Happy to have you. Chanel, I'm glad I saw your text. Um, we will go with uh, Christina, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Christina Katsapis. I'm the uh, manager of college partnerships with Villanova University. Um, and we're uh, very proud and happy to be a sponsor for VBRN. Um, I am um, looking to obviously just uh, help support you and the community um, with any educational resources and needs. Um, the College of Professional Studies is the um, adult learning and continuing education part of the college. So um, we are here to um, partner and um, be available and, and help you with those educational resources. Christina Katsapis. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Um, let's see, Joey Dyson. Hey, everybody. Joey Mack with the Mobile Cigar Lounge, uh, creating beautiful experiences and turning them to unforgettable memories. United States Marine Corps, hoorah, uh, E4 Mafia. Um, what I'm looking to connect to is venues, DJs, wedding planners, and, and the Philadelphia, uh, Greater Philly area. Um, thank you again. We've connected with several of you, so I really appreciate it. Uh, Joey Mack with the Mobile Cigar Lounge. Nice work. Way to squeeze in your URA. Uh, Bob to. worked. <laughs> Bob, are you still on here? I don't know. I didn't see his name anywhere. No? Okay. Um, Mike? Do we lose Mike Hanger too? Hmm. All righty. Um, let's go with Doug Amlin. All right, so oh, I just texted him. me. I think he's had oh, there a we go. He's connecting. So, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. I had a, I was tapping furiously and it was not working. Hi, my name is Doug Amlin. I'm with Amlin Analytics, uh, United States Marine Corps, uh, 87 to 91. Uh, referrals I need are companies that realize they want to use their data in a more profitable way. Uh, so that's what I do. Referrals I've given, uh, not a lot to this group, but I, I do. I have a lot of contacts in the IT industry for those that need that type of work. I can refer you to probably the right person. Uh, and again, my name is Doug Amlin. Thank you, Doug. Hi, right. Ashley, do you wanna go? Hi, uh, no, I'm just a show pony. I, Jesus, I work for JPVN. I'm here on the back end, making sure everyone stays safe and sound and nobody, nobody's on fire, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. I do have a day job, but I right now I work with GPVN. So thanks very much. All right. Um, we lost a couple people, so hopefully if they hop back on, we'll give them the opportunity. But my name is Erica Webster. My service was the United States Army. My current role is I own an all women's fitness gym called Dub Fitness. 
referrals that I need are women clients and uh, referrals I've given. Uh, right now, I'm actually really trying to give John and Caleb some business with fellow gym owners who are looking to purchase PPE for when we reopen. I've sent some business to Chad, um, some uh, business well, with Ashley. So just kind of like dabbing everywhere, trying to um, help everyone out. Um, so that's our 30 second intro. And that's kind of like my favorite part because I feel that it gives you PPE is protective equipment. So they have, um, I think Caleb's company is doing like personalized hand sanitizer in smaller sizes and they have larger sizes, um, masks. I know that Jonathan um, is working with someone who does like the fogging um, thing. So when you come in, you can like fog the room and it sanitizes you have to stay out of it for, for a while. So if you are interested in that, um, make sure you write down their names so that you guys can connect. Okay. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started with our speaker. And as you can see, oh, look at this beautiful bio is right there. Um, so Jesse is one of my really good dearest friends, but that's not why he's here um, with us this morning. Uh, he might kill me, but he will never share these details with you as he is humble to the core about his service. Um, but a few things that you should know about him that it is not in that beautiful bio of his um, but are things that I think are relevant to his talk. Um, so if you are like me and you hear uh, the word philosophy major or maybe like me two years ago before I met Jesse, you're probably thinking um, this certain kind of like I guess reputation like oh you're studying philosophy, super artsy, not something that's too serious. You kind of maybe can't nail something down so you choose philosophy but um, the, the Jesse, who's a philosophy PhD student, is not like that at all. Um, so I'm here to dispel those myths and give him a little pep talk, I guess. Um, so when I hear philosophy PhD student, I have this idea in my head of some nerd who'd rather read books than leave the wire. But I had the pleasure of getting to know Jesse, the combat warrior behind all the brains. He was a drill sergeant and a combatives instructor at the age of 23. He lived in downtown Fallujah during his tour in Iraq and participated in over 40 planned combat ops and then probably a bunch of other unplanned ones too. Um, so to keep tooting Jesse's horn, I, I wish I knew if he was like blushing over there. Um, I'm just really incredibly proud to know him and proud to be his friend. But for those who think that maybe a philosophy PhD is not serious or it's something really easy to get into, um, he goes to Penn and there is a 5% acceptance rate. Now, if you think about Warren, the school of my dreams, where I'm trying to attend, the acceptance rate is 20%. That is the best school in the country, and it has a higher acceptance rate than the program that Jesse is in. So when I think um, about defining economic success, it's not a question for business, it's a question for philosophy, and it's a question for my friend Jesse. So I'm super excited to hear him talk this morning. And without further ado, the floor is yours, Jesse. Jesse, okay. I get, okay. Great. Um, so, can you um, can you make me a co-host? Maybe. Okay. Cool. Because then I can then I'll be able to share my screen. Um, and uh, and and you'll see one of the uh, fortes of uh, a philosophy PhD student is not technology. So I'll probably mess up screen or screw up uh, sharing my screen. Um, so, uh, so yes, Erica, I, I, I was blushing um, when, when you said all that. Um, I, I thought when you said you were going to talk about some of the things that were not on my bio, uh, I, I thought you were going to be talking about the really important um, statistics from uh, Iraq, uh, which was um, how many planned and unplanned naps I took um, during the day. Um, so that, that, that number is, is much greater. Um, or I thought maybe you would you would talk about how um, every unit I was in, I, I earned the, the nickname Shamilton um, independently. So um, so yeah, the, the, those are the interesting facts that that never make it to uh, to, to resumes or um, to, to bios. But um, okay, so am I a co-host now? Can I share my screen? You should be good to go. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let me. Let me share this one. Let me start my PowerPoint. Okay, can you guys see the PowerPoint or can you see all of, all of my notes? We are good on this end. Okay, awesome. 
So, all right. Um, so thank you, Erica. Thank you, um, BBRN. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, I'm not really used to, to giving presentations uh, over Zoom. I much prefer to, uh, to, to, to talk to people in, in person, um, uh, but uh, nevertheless, really happy to be here. So I, th I think that uh, to build on something that Erica said, um, it's important to talk just really quickly about what, uh, what philosophers do. Um, and, and how it's relevant to, to the discussion at hand uh, when it comes uh, to defining economic success. So um, philosophers typically will identify and attempt to answer questions. Um, they, they find the important questions to ask and then figure out how they're gonna ask them. Um, philosophers will challenge uh, certain uh, assumptions that, that people believe uh, about the world, certain uh, things that people hold to be true and ask them, are these things really true? If we're basing our decisions on them, we better be sure about that. Um, and finally, um, another thing philosophers do is, uh, is, is we develop concepts. So uh, we find the right questions to ask or what we believe to be the right questions to ask. Um, we ask what the important considerations are uh, and that leads us um, to, to concept development. So um, that's the approach that, uh, that, that I took um, when Erica asked me to talk about, um, you know, how do we define uh, economic success? So um, uh, another thing that philosophers do is, is they'll typically start out um, their, uh, their description of a concept by describing uh, what some people might take uh, a certain concept to mean. So that's exactly what I did. And I thought, well, how did, um, you know, uh, door kicking, knuckle dragging, um, grunt like Jesse uh, getting out of the military think about economic success. After all, it was it was an important consideration when I was choosing um, my civilian career. Um, and, and I think that some of the ways that I defined economic success was, you know, making making as much money as possible. Um, you know, perhaps a one day building a large and, and profitable uh, um, business, um, you know, perhaps retiring early um, and, and definitely, you know, not living paycheck to paycheck. So um, I think it's important uh, to, to define uh, success um, because that's the goal that we're going to uh, work towards. That's, you know, the, the stake out in the ground that, uh, that presumably is going to drive our actions. Um, and so, you know, when I did internal consulting at Vanguard, you know, one of the first questions we would ask our internal clients was, how do you define success? You know, at the end of doing all of this, how do we know if we were successful? Um, so super important to, uh, a super important question to, to, to ask. Um, so I think that in, in hindsight, these, uh, these ways of defining economic success um, are pretty simplistic. Um, uh, moreover, I, I think that we're making a mistake by uh, defining success along a, a continuum. Uh, you know, for example, like income. And I, I think that that might lead to problems. Um, and I, I think it leads to some definitional problems. So if, if we're defining economic success by making a lot of money, uh, that means that if, if somebody, you know, just works their fingers to the bone and works overtime that they've achieved economic success, uh, there seems to be something intuitively uh, off with that. Um, it just, it, it, it doesn't make too much sense when I think about it. Um, and the same can go for, for business size or profitability or early retirement. You know, if you think about early retirement, well, what does early mean? If I retire a year early, does that mean I was more economically successful? It leads to, to more uh, questions, I think, than, than it answers. Um, but I think the real problem in defining economic success along a continuum like these um, is that uh, it sets us up to chase a constantly moving target. Um, and so think about making lots of money. You can always be more economically successful. Uh, under using that definition. And so that means that if you're making, you know, uh, if you get out of the military and you're making, you know, $50,000, that means that $60,000 is more economically, you know, you should consider yourself more economically successful. And, and that could just go up, um, you know, um, as, 
as, as high as you as as you wanted to. So um, so I think that these these definitions or these conceptions of economic success are are problematic. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I think we're all taught in the military is that uh, when you identify a problem, you better have a solution, um, or at least that's how my my first sergeant uh, explained it to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to present to you a, a new way of thinking about economic success um, in a in a dichotomous sense, in a binary sense. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean, on or off, uh, yes or no, go or no go. How do you know if you're a success at the uh, evaluated casualty statement or uh, station in basic training? You're a go or no go. It doesn't matter, you know, how quickly you did it. It doesn't matter how, um, you know, uh, concise you were or how clear it's either, did you meet the standard or did you not? Uh, you're a go or no go at this station. Um, Quick side note, I think about all of the different um, go and no-go stations that I had to go through in basic training, and I think it's just a miracle that I, uh, I never um, could imagine me being a go in so many consecutive stations. I just look back and I'm like, how did 18-year-old Jesse uh, manage to get through evaluated casualty? So, because um, I, I certainly couldn't do that now. Um, so, all right, um, uh, side note over. So, um, all right, so, so some of you might already conceptualize um, con success uh, in a dichotomous way. Um, uh, some of you might not. Um, for those of you who are kind of hesitant to, to identify success like that, um, uh, here are some other instances of um, defining success in the either on or off, go or no-go way. Um, what is a successful basketball shot in, or in, in the basketball game? It either went in or it didn't. You either scored the points or you didn't. Same thing with the job application. You either got the job uh, or, or you didn't. So, um, so what is the proposed uh, definition? Oops. Again, technology is not my strong suit and I've lost track of my mouse. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's the proposed definition. Um, uh, I'm gonna argue uh, very briefly um, uh, that economic success means meeting the minimum income required to pursue the good life. Okay, so what is the good life? The good life is a term that we use in, in philosophy. I also think it's the name of a, a, a TV show um, that I haven't had the opportunity to check out yet. Um, uh, which doesn't make too much sense in quarantine. I should have, you know, a lot of Netflix on, but I don't. Um, but the good life is, um, uh, one way to think about that is the way that Aristotle, um, uh, famous ancient Greek philosopher, thought about it um, in his uh, ethical uh, treatise, uh, Nicomachean Ethics. He defined the good life as eudaimonia. And eudaimonia, uh, translated uh, from uh, Greek to English, um, you know, means uh, human flourishing or happiness. Um, that's the conception that a lot of ethicists and a lot of philosophers uh, use. It's the one that I use. So when you see good life, just think happiness, uh, you know, the way that you want to live your life, uh, things that give you uh, pleasure, things that give you meaning. Um, uh, when you think of yourself as uh, being in a state of flourishing, um, that, that should be uh, indicative of, of you living a good life. Um, so why do I think that this is uh, a, a better definition than the ones I proposed earlier? Um, I think that it allows us to uh, envision, um, you know, our economic activity, uh, what we do to earn an income uh, as a means as opposed to uh, potentially an end. You know, we don't collect money um, or Maybe we shouldn't collect money um, just for the sake of collecting it. You know, we use money to go do things. We use money to um, uh, to, to to pursue other uh, goals and other projects that are important to us. Um, so, uh, so if we view economic success as as an enabler of other activities, I think it's uh, much more constructive. Um, so. One of the things that I, I think this is really important, uh, especially for small business owners, um, is because it really allows you to have um, uh, much more flexibility in, in how you spend your time 
and uh, how you uh, define your strategic objectives for your business. Um, because if you know you can meet your basic uh, uh, minimum income requirements in your business, um, that means you're not focused on strictly profitability. Um, or at least you don't have to be. Um, or when you think, am I successful or not? You're not looking just at the bottom line. You're looking at uh, a much wider range of, of activities um, and, and outcomes in your business. Um, so uh, I think what, what makes this definition, at least in my mind, a little bit better is it allows uh, two people who are um, doing different things, um, who are at different stages of their life, who have different incomes uh, to, to say um, they're both economically successful um, in their own mind. Um, so uh, a few of the assumptions, I talked about you know, challenging assumptions um, uh, that I made when uh, I was proposing this definition um, is that everybody's conception of the good life is gonna be different. How I wanna live my life is going to be different than Erica's, um, than everybody else who's who's on this uh, on on this Zoom call, and that's good. That's you know um, that that adds uh, you know diversity to our world. We're not all the same people. We have different goals, um, and and we when we are pursuing what we conceive to be the good life, that's what drives our actions. Um, you know, that's a, a rational decision for me. Um, is an irrational decision for anybody is going to be uh, uh, in virtue of pursuing what we see as, as being good for us um, and perhaps those who are around us, our communities, our family, um, our significant others. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, econ economic activity is just one of these types of actions um, that, we, uh, that we undertake in pursuit of, of, of the good life. You know, there are other actions uh, that we might take. It might be uh, you know, giving time, uh, you know, uh, philanthropic activities. It could be uh, education, uh, learning about things, uh, pursuing you know, a healthy lifestyle, um, which I need all the help I can get from Erica. Um, the quarantine has basically um, uh, turned me into my favorite uh, PT target when I was a drill sergeant. Um, I'd be screaming at myself right now, but again, I'm distracting myself. Um, uh, but yeah, there, there's, there's more than one type of uh, action other than economic activity. Um, and all of these actions, if you think about all of the different types of things that you do in a day, these are all contributing to your conception of the good life. Um, you, you know, what brings you happiness? Uh, what, uh, what makes you flourish as a person? So um, this leads me to the belief that everybody is gonna have a different, um, uh, a different definition of economic success. Um, and for some people, uh, that's gonna be, you know, perhaps, you know, making a lot of money. Um, you know, perhaps for some people that's going to be retiring um, early. Uh, that might be, you know, living, uh, it might be driving a fancy car. That could be a, an important part of, um, uh, of, of living the good life. It could be just collecting money for the sake of collecting money because that's something that you consider to be the good life. Uh, one thing that uh, a misconception about uh, philosophers and ethicists is that we do a lot of moralizing. We tell people what's right and what's wrong. And when it comes to your own actions that don't affect anyone else, um, we take a hands-off approach. If, if, uh, if you define economic success in one way, um, you know, that's, that's up to you, that's, that's your choice. And I think that that's, that's good and that's how it should be. Um, so those were some of the assumptions that, that, I, that I brought to bear on this definition. And hopefully they provide you know, some evidence for support of why we should accept uh, this, this definition of um, uh, economic success. So um, I think another thing that I was taught in the military was to, to leave people with uh, some, sort of, uh, some sort of plan of action. So uh, if you would like to try to define economic success um, along the ways that I just described, um, and, and I've done this uh, for, for myself, by the way, um, and it, it seems to be working out um, pretty well. Um, so 
I, I would recommend uh, reverse enge engineering your economic success uh, based on the definition that we've proposed. Um, and so as you can see, I've tried, uh, uh, the army never taught me how to make PowerPoints. And I, I think that at one point, like I was told not to have like anything that was like really frilly on it. Um, and and I, I feel like my unit would be yelling at me for adding colors uh, to this, but I think the colors, um, I think the colors help um, because they link the definition um, to the step. And so again, we're reverse engineering. So determine what your conception of the good life is. You probably have some pretty good ideas uh, about what that is, um, uh, but you really wanna lock that down first, I think. Um, then, uh, you know, determine what, what's the minimum income you need to, um, to, to, to pursue that good life. Um, and, and that might be an, an actual hard number. Um, you know, it doesn't have to remain static. You know, it could be, you know, hey, I, uh, you know, my conception of the good life right now requires me to go to school. Um, I don't need a lot of money when I'm in college. You know, I'm, I'm eating ramen, you know, um, you know, I'm drinking super cheap beer um, and, you know, rot gut vodka. Um, so I don't need a lot of money. This is what I need. Um, and so I, I don't need to focus all of my attention on um, on uh, economic activity. I can focus it on other things like developing my network, um, getting good grades, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you want to determine uh, how you're going to meet that meet that amount. Um, and I think that once you meet that amount, that um, that uh, you should consider yourself economically successful. Um, I think it's probably healthy spiritually to do that. Um, again, I, I think that um, uh, the definition, uh, this sort of definition is important because um, it doesn't constrain you uh, to chase a moving target uh, that you just never, uh, it, you never catch up to. It's like, you know, the greyhound on the racetrack chasing the rabbit, um, you know, the greyhound never chases the rabbit. Actually, that's not true. Um, sometimes the rabbit stops. I'm not sure if you've seen, uh, uh, you know, this happen in real life, but it's pretty crazy. Like it just, the, the, the race is over, the dogs attack the rabbit. Um, it's, it's utter pandemonium. So um, if you're looking to go down a, a YouTube rabbit hole, no pun intended, uh, Google that, it's pretty entertaining. Um, but yeah, the definition, um, it, it, uh, you're not chasing a moving target. Um, it allows different people to define what success means. Um, for themselves, and I think that's important um, uh, because it allows you to modify um, uh, your economic success um, uh, and and not bench your, benchmark yourself um, uh, against others, um, and it allows you to to modify uh, your goals um, as uh, <clears throat> as your other uh, as your other goals um, change. So um, I I think that this is important for us as as individuals, um, you know, I, I think it's also important um, for for us as mentors, um, as as we uh, as we assist our fellow brothers and sisters in arms um, as they transition from a career in the military um, to a civilian career. Um, you know, economic activity and economic success was a major reason why I chose to be a business major um, coming out of the military. Um, you know, things worked out well for me. I don't regret um, most of the things that I've done in my life because I'm, I'm fairly happy now. Um, but I, if, I, if I could go back, I might do something a little bit different. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so th that's... Um, that's how I choose to define economic success um, uh, in my life. That's how I encourage uh, you know, young veterans that I mentor, uh, how they should define economic success. Um, I hope that I've uh, made my case to you. Um, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Um, at the very least, uh, um, I hope I've given you some, uh, some food for thought. Um, and if I haven't given you some food for thought, um, hopefully you get to check out the, uh, uh, when things go awry at the racetrack with the uh, rabbit. So uh, on that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and open it up to any questions that you might have. Hey, Jesse, Betsy, can you just, oh yeah, go ahead. Can you give me host, <laughs> host uh, permission back, please? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. I accidentally gave you host, not co-host, because apparently coffee is not strong enough for me this morning. <laughs> Let 
Ooh, I can put you in the waiting room. Don't you dare. I got people in the waiting room already yelling at me, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, uh, make host. Okay, here we go. Thank God. Got it. Um, Jesse, I have a question. <laughs> Sorry, hydrate. Drink water. All Sorry. right, so do you, <laughs> um, how often do you suggest, so obviously everyone's business here is different, everyone's running something different. How often do you think that someone should kind of reevaluate their good life success um, chart, right? So if I set my goal and I answer all these questions and I have it ready, and then maybe in five years I meet it, should I try to like reevaluate and reset or should I just be content and comfortable? Um, so maybe like, how do I know if I should go for more, but I also don't want to go for more and then stress out and then lose the good life that I had. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so that's, that's an excellent question. Um, and, and there's, there's, um, uh, I'm going to answer it after I, I um, I'm going to answer it in two ways. Um, so, so first, I, I think that one of the, um, one of the things that makes those, those previous, uh, uh, definitions of economic success problematic is that, um, it, it also allows a person to, uh, adjust their, their quality of life, um, with their income. Um, and so, you know, if you think about, it, you're going to get raises, um, you're, you're, maybe you're going to move and, and that's not, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Um, but, but you've, you're, uh, by default setting your bar for economic success higher and higher and higher. Um, you know, every time, uh, you get a raise at work, you make more money and you increase your quality of life. You, know, you go out and get a sports car, um, you, you know, um, so, so, so that's, that's, um, that's one advantage of, of just setting that minimum of what you need to pursue a happy life. So to, to directly answer your question, um, what I've done is, um, and, and this is something that, 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 uh, um, that I do in my business life as well. Um, and as in my personal life, um, I have a one, three and five year plan. Um, and I update those every year. Um, and obviously I'm going to update the one year plan every year. Um, but I think it's also important to allow those, um, those updates to filter through to the three and the five year plan. Um, so, um, that, that's, that's how I would, um, that's how I would do that. Question. Actually, Jesse, um, part of kind of piggyback off what you said too. I'm sorry if I'm like Bogart and somebody else had a question, I'm sure. But, uh, um, I think also a part of it is how you feel too, right? I mean, like the good life, so well, like you say in your, in your presentation is very uh, unique and very specific to you. Um, I think a lot of times we tend to look too much at and focus too much on, like you said, the, the, the dollar amount going up our bank, our, our checking account or our savings account, blah, blah. Like when I do financial plans, uh, I, I talk to clients, they say, oh yeah, I want my 401k to get huge or I want my life insurance to be huge or whatever. But I'm like, well, for what? Like what? are you doing that for, you know, like you said, it's a means to an end, not an end in itself. So the good life, so, so, you know, or comfort should really be how you feel. Like, you know, do I feel, do I can get up in, in the morning and not have a whole lot of stress? You know, can I have fun? Can I live life? As opposed to the first thing that comes to my mind is, Oh, how am I going to make the next dollar? You know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, and, and as far as what you say too, I mean, again, I don't want to step on any toes, but, as far as how often you should look at it. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I look at it all the time, you know, cause it is a feel like if I wake up one morning and say, you know what, like, damn, uh, you know, I'm hungry or, you know, I wish I could go out. Like right now I wish I can go out cause this whole COVID thing, but that's a whole nother story. But, um, but if you feel some kind of way where, you know, you feel like you're not pleased with things, you should look at why things are, and especially if, if you have a major change in your life, like if you got divorced, or if you got like, you know, your kids are in college, or you know, you got a promotion, or you got a demotion, or you got laid off, whatever, that should be a, another way you should recalibrate, you know, your weapon system and kind of say, okay, what's the new target. So that's just kind of my, my, my take on it. But um, I think you made some really good points. I made some chats in here saying, you know what, you know, great points, you know, success is very subjective and unique to each person. So that's kind of my take on it, I guess. Yeah, no, that's, 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 uh, 
All excellent points. I mean, um, especially with uh, the point you made about uh, major life changes, you, you know, um, you know, your goals are going to change um, when important things happen in your life, when you get married, when you have kids, you know, um, and, and that's definitely, I think, um, you know, time for, for a recalibration. And yeah, and, and that could, it, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, this is, this is something that, that can happen, um, you know, not in a, in a structured way. Um, you know, it, it didn't happen in a structured way for me, you know, when I got out of the military and I, I, I started working, um, you know, I gradually, um, you know, um, started to, to achieve some success at work. I started to make, um, you know, um, good money. Um, and then I got to a point where I was making way more money than, than I probably should have been making, um, or that I ever expected to make. Um, and when I looked at my life, I was, I was living a life that was just absolutely like. I, I hated it, you know, um, there, there were things about it. Um, and, and, uh, I remember thinking to myself like, wow, like, you know, if, uh, you know, 19 year old private Hamilton, who's just, you know, woken up from a deep, you know, midday slumber on a work day, um, or to look at you, um, he'd say, oh, wow, Jesse, you know, like, like future Jesse's really successful. Um, but I, I was much happier, you know, um, you know, scraping by in my in my barracks room than I was um, at, at points in my corporate career. And there, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. Um, and I think that what it goes back to is the way that I was defining uh, economic success and how I was placing economic success, um, you know, in this broader picture of other forms of success in my life. So, yeah, great, great. Thank you for sharing that. Any, any, anyone else anyone have any questions? Yeah. I, I, I have a question for the group. Um, who, who disagrees? Who, who, who thinks that this is crazy? I don't think it's crazy. Uh, I, I think that, or what you, are you trying to like bifurcate success as in like economic success and personal real life success? or they kind of blended together. How are you? I, uh, I, I think my main objective um, is in, in this is, is not to, um, not to suggest where um, on a relative scale, you know, a person should place economic success relative to other forms of success. Um, I think it's more just, uh, you know, don't, the argument I'm making is, 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 is don't make economic success a moving target. Um, you know, be very particular about uh, how you define it. Um, because if it is a moving target, um, you, you know, and, and, and this isn't like, Hey, like mediocrity is great. Um, it's, it's, it's more about like, Hey, if I'm meeting my minimum you know, requirements for a certain thing, you know, that, that allows me to go out and do other things that I otherwise wouldn't do. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Th does that, does that answer your question? It, it does. It does. Okay. But I feel like it kind of is a moving target economic success, especially like given these uncertain times, like I went from pretty sweet gig to like now kind of having to figure it out. So it's like those minimum standards have changed my idea of economic success, my idea of I, I don't know, I guess just success period has kind of changed given all the new circumstances. I know I'm not alone, but. Um. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's, you know, that's a big event. Um, and uh, to, uh, was it Joey I, who, who, who made this point yeah. earlier about. Um, Sorry. What, yes, it was you, Joey. Like with major changes. So, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused when I'm Jonathan. trying to, it was okay. Yeah. This, so, sorry. About that. Um, um, uh, yeah. So it's, you know, when there's a major event, like all of a sudden the, uh, the, the conception of economic success changes to, you know, a COVID environment. It's like, Hey, I'm economic. You know, it's not about how much money I make. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make as much money as possible. It's, I'm just trying to make enough money to, um, to get through this, 
in one piece, um, you know. I get it. Just trying to get your piece of the pie. That's what I always say. Like, I don't want to be a trillionaire. I don't want to like take a company public. Like, I just want my piece of the pie to be able to sustain myself and my family uh, to be happy. But I think it's kind of a fallacy. I think that we are consumers and we are by nature always wanting more, wanting to just constantly do better, grow, 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 everything. Right. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, like, uh, I, I think there's, there's a, a way to, uh, in, interpret this definition, um, uh, you know, in, in a very like Puritan manner where it's like, you know, I'm just, you know, um, I'm going to live, you know, a, uh, you know, this like Spartan life where there's no pleasure. And, you know, I, I, I live, you know, um, in a hovel and, you know, don't eat flavored foods and, you know, things like that. Um, and, and that's not the case. I, I, I think that, um, that uh, someone who wants to make a lot of money um, uh, or wants to grow their business or wants to retire early, um, that's fine. And, and, and that could very well uh, be part of the good life. Um, but I don't know if it's part of, you know, uh, economic success um, uh, per se. Um, you know, it might be um, economic activity is probably going to have something to do with those things. Um, but those people are pursuing those things for different reasons other than strictly economic success. You know, maybe it's that they, you know, want to, um, they're really competitive and they just want to grow their business, you know. Um, that's that's something else. That's not economic success, um, in in my conception. Yeah, I you know I I, I didn't mean Puritan in 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 a negative um, in in a negative way. I apologize for that. Anyone else? Any other questions? Jesse, I think that um, was. Uh, phenomenal. Great. I think I often um, feel, I don't want to say insecure about my business, but when people say, you know, or how much money do you make or what's your income? And, but I feel like I can drop and take a vacation tomorrow if I wanted to, and I don't have to ask anybody for permission and I live the good life and I don't need to be um, a millionaire. Uh, I always say I get paid in helping other people. Um, but we appreciate you and I think that it was great and I look forward to re-watching it and kind of implementing this. I think it's easy to kind of get lost um, in thinking that money is, um, you know, the most important thing when really it's, it's relationships and families and all of that. But again, it's all relative to everybody. Um, thank you everyone for attending this morning. I apologize if you were sitting in the waiting room for a little bit. We had host um, spot problems and we didn't want to interrupt Jesse while he was um, talking. But again, thanking Comcast and Villanova for being our sponsors. And the next BBRN is on June 17th, I believe I am correct. Um, so just make sure that you register through Eventbrite because that is how you are sent the link for um, the BBRN and hopefully uh, within the next few months, we will all be in person again. So again, thank you, everyone. And I will see you next month. I do have one announcement, just because we've been using our partner from HIO is a tool that we're using to communicate with each other throughout uh, our VBR meetings. You guys should have received emails. If you haven't, I apologize. We're in the process of making sure it works. Um, HIO is a tool that you can uh, sign up with VBRN and then be able to communicate with the attendees once it starts. So it's a great way to communicate offline as well as online uh, through this app. You'll be getting uh, instructions again, just like you did last time. and. Uh, emails to sign up for it. Um, you'll be receiving also a copy of this uh, presentation and then everybody that joined today, their email addresses so you can connect with each other. So uh, hopefully that helps, but otherwise, please, please, please use HIO. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate the, the link in the chat. You guys are on top of it. And Chanel also has HIO. Uh, I miss you too, Clint. And uh, hopefully everything will work out. But thank you everybody for joining and I'll let Erica wrap it up. We're good. We are good to go. Bye, everyone. Enjoy your yeah. day.